Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to share with you my bucket list, so to speak. I don't like calling it bucket list. I call mine my carpe diem list. So it's kind of a combination of places I want to travel to and then things I want to do. So I will jump right into it. First place I want to travel to, well not first place, but like big on my list is Fiji. I haven't always had a actual bucket list up until a few years ago. And this is my updated one. It's not including stuff that I've checked off of it. But ever since I was, I don't know, six or seven, I've wanted to go to Fiji. When I was that age, my parents took my siblings and me to Hawaii and we visited the Polynesian Culture Center. And I can't remember exactly what the presentation was. It might have been drums. Little note about me, I love the sound of drums. But something about the presentation for Fiji has stuck with me ever since and I've wanted to go there ever since. So that's a big one on my list. Next two, I really want to go to Glacier National Park and Olympic National Park. When I see pictures of them, you know, I have to pick my jaw up off the floor because it just looks absolutely stunning and I really want to make it there soon, someday soon. Next place I want to go to is Smuggler's Notch State Park in Vermont, but I specifically want to go there during the fall. Again, pictures are what make me want to go to all these places, but pictures of this particular road there in the fall are stunning. Just the colors and the landscape just would be wonderful. Also on my travel list are the Lava Beds National Monument in California. I think it's in like Tula Lake. Probably butchering the name, I'm sorry. But it's in California and I want to go there because it sounds cool and it looks cool. I want to go to like the entire state of Montana. I just want to see Montana. I know it seems like maybe one of those places where there isn't a lot, but I've heard that it's stunning. For some random reason, this has always stuck with me. In the Hunt for the Red October movie, it's got like Sean Connery and then I should know his name, but I don't because he's the one that actually says it. But it's got the main guy from Jurassic Park where his lifelong dream was to move to Montana. And he's this Russian dude and it's just really sweet. Anyway, that's a good movie. You should go watch it. So I've been to a lot of major cities in the United States, except for the South. I don't really have a huge desire to visit the South for some reason. I mean, I don't have a good reason. I just don't. It's, the feeling's not there. It's them. It's not me. But I have been to San Francisco and... Seattle and New York and Boston and Washington DC and Chicago is another big city but I have not been there and I would love to go so if any of you have any inside tips on traveling in Chicago and what's the best to see what's the best to eat I love food a lot and particularly any suggestions that aren't you know, the basic, go see the bean. It's kind of like the only thing I know people go see. But it's just a bean. What's the pill behind that? Someone please let me know. Anyway, moving on. Okay, I want to go to Iceland and Norway. I have this obsession with Vikings. Scandinavia, that whole area up there. I would love to visit. And I probably have some ancestry there. So I'm very much, I have a lot of Scottish in me, but my mom was doing some family history digging and 
she noticed that a lot of the Scottish people, she noticed that like the further back she went, there were a lot of people from further, further east than just the British Isles. And by further east, I mean like Scandinavia. I really want to get one of those like 23andMe or just one of those genetic ancestry tests just to kind of see a breakdown of who I am. Okay, I want to go to New Zealand. One, because I know it's beautiful. Well, I've heard that the people are wonderful. I had an aunt and uncle live there and they absolutely loved it. But also I'm a Lord of the Rings fan. There's no doubt about it. And that's Middle Earth, basically. So I have to go. In British Columbia, there's the suspension bridge and it just looks very cool and I want to walk across it. So that's like travel slash do on my list. I guess I should probably figure out what else there is to do in British Columbia. All right, now going completely into my to-do part of my carpe diem list is have a pet fox. I love foxes. This has been kind of a goal of mine for many years, since I was a teenager. Even if I never check this one off, it's just staying on the list because I love foxes a lot. My all-time favorite animal is a cheetah. I don't remember a time that it wasn't my favorite animal. And I just want to like hold or touch or cuddle. I just want to interact with a cheetah, you know, up close. So I, I should probably go to South Africa and volunteer something or other down there. I want to see the Northern Lights or the Aurora Borealis, as some people call them, in person and probably listen to Phil Collins' Brother Bear's soundtrack all there. Or Enya. Enya would probably fit the mood well as well. Okay, next thing. This one has always been a dream of mine ever since I was tiny tiny and watching Disney's Fantasia. I'm not sure if it's Fantasia or Fantasia 2000. But there's this one song and it's got a bunch of centaurs. And further into the song, you see a bunch of characters stomping on grapes to make wine. I don't drink wine, but I do drink a lot of grape juice. So I want to stomp on grapes and make grape juice. But I guess this one is partly just to include that I have a insane love for Concord grapes. Go watch Fantasia. Ooh, this one's good. In case you can't tell, I'm following a PowerPoint that my dear cousin made for me. I didn't ask her to, but she saw that I was writing out my bucket list and she was, ooh, I'm going to make this into a PowerPoint for you. But this next, next to do on my carpe diem. So I want to make a complete pizza from total scratch or as much from total scratch as I can. So I want to use as many of the ingredients as possible from my own garden. So like the tomatoes and maybe the garlic, peppers, basil. Basil's a must. I just want to do that. I love cooking when, when you have a little bit of time to just kind of sit there and enjoy it. And I feel like food tastes better after you've made it and put that time into it. But yeah, that's one of my goals. Another thing, I want to get a legitimate henna tattoo. I've had the henna goo, you know, and drawn cute little designs on myself. I think that'd be cool to get a full out tattoo, henna tattoo. So earlier I was talking about how I'm Scottish, but the other half of me is very much German, Swiss German. And I really love that because I have a strong connection with my grandparents, that side that comes from. And we've been to Germany, but I was really little and I, but I loved it. It was magical. It was magical. At one part we 
driving by the Black Forest and we realized that my older siblings and myself told our parents to stop the car and they did and we just went and ran around the forest and it was really magical. So do that if you're ever in Germany. All of that leading into that I really want to wear a Drindle. They really cute. Look it up. It's spelled D R sorry, it's spelled D I R N D L, I believe. Yeah. It's just cute and traditional dress. I shouldn't say cute. It's just lovely cultural dress and I like it. Okay, to keep on moving on with my list, I really want to ski by moonlight sometime. I've done night skiing where they have those big spotlights, but I think that'd be really cool to be somewhere during a full moon, not be somewhere, be on some mountain and just be able to ski by the moonlight. I've done the moonlight hikes down at Great Basin National Park, which was amazing. And so if you ever get the chance to do that, I highly suggest it. But that is a huge goal of mine to get to ski by moonlight. It's kind of a simple one and you know, I could probably go do it in my backyard this winter. I just need to put my mind to it. The next one is like not serious, but I've, I've had it on my list before there was even even a list. I've just always loved this picture. And it's to have breakfast with Aslan. And I'll just show you. I remember seeing the picture of the girl eating cereal with a lion next to her. And I thought that was great. So I named him Aslan and now he is Aslan. Okay, at some point I want to have a dog. I'm definitely a dog person. I think... Cats are cute. I think they can be sweet, but I'm also highly allergic to them. You know, I've just read articles on where they kind of are really creepy animals, but they can be very sweet. But anyway, definitely a dog person. And there are three main dogs that I will want to eventually have to choose between what one I want. And First one being a Rhodesian Ridgeback. They're just these beautiful big dogs. Oh, I'm a big dog person. No little dogs. I don't like them at all. So a Rhodesian Ridgeback, they're this breed of dog that was actually bred, they say, to help people hunt lions. Obviously, I'm not going to be going hunting lions, but they're just really cool. They're called Ridgebacks because... They have a actual ridge on their back. The other dog that I really love is a Dalmatian. I've heard a lot of conflicting things about their temperament though. Anyone that knows or has a Dalmatian that could give me more, more information on that, very much appreciated. The want for that dog comes because of Disney's 101 Dalmatians. There's that scene where the lady's walking down the road with, I think her name's Perdita, the dog. And they just look so classy and cute. That's why I want a Dalmatian. And then the last dog is a Golden Retriever. They are a family favorite. They're beautiful, sweet, amazing creatures. Next thing on my to-do is make homemade honey. I want to keep bees at some point in the future, probably like way down in the future. I think within the next 10 or 15 years though, for sure. I have had a long standing obsession with honey and people know it, I'm proud of it, save the bees. This next thing that I wanna do, I am hoping to be able to accomplish it within the next three years at least, three years at the max probably, like of when I'm going to start, but I want to become a yoga teacher. I started doing yoga when I was a late older teenager and it just kind of started off slowly and I've just consistently done it over the years. I find it 
an exercise that's really useful for me on many levels. Not only does it make me physically feel more balanced and kind of in tune with myself, but it also helps me either start the day off right or end a day as a way to get relaxed. And it's just become a very much loved part of my life. And I love teaching people. I love sharing things that I'm passionate about with people. I think it would be great to get actually certified and be able to share that with people in a way that will make it possible for me to continue to do that. So within the next five years, I would like to start towards my master's degree. I currently have my bachelor's degree in English teaching. I just would love to be able to further my education. I love learning and if it can provide me with greater ability to help others, then that's what I want to do. And that's my goal. Not really thinking about it right now. I'm just going to kind of get started with teaching and getting comfortable with that. And then I'll start into that. But that's out there in the future. And then my very last thing is on my carpe diem to do is eventually get married to a good man and raise happy, happy babies. I'm not putting the timeline on that one because who the heck knows. But with all of that, I'm just going to live happily ever after for the rest of my days. So that is my carpe diem bucket list. Let me know what you guys have on yours. Let me know what you like. And I hope you have a wonderful, amazing rest of your day.